Hello and welcome to another video tutorial on this channel. In the next maybe 20 minutes I show you how to create a responsive navbar which changes from a horizontal alignment of the navbar items for the normal desktop use case to a vertical alignment when you switch to mobile use case which also includes a hamburger button on which you can then click to open and close the navbar. And for this we will mostly use CSS and then also some jQuery same as in the last video which we'll use to apply some starts and classes to certain elements on the homepage and also make it animate. So let's go. So for this tutorial, I'll again use my homepage template, which you can download or clone from my GitHub repository and I'll leave a link to it below. So I changed it a bit since the last video. So it's a more modern template now and you can easier use it at as base for your own styling. So what we have done the last time is make the navbar sticky. So when I scroll down, it will stick to the top so I can always reach it. And then I can go to other pages. I have a contact form, which is completely working. If you just provide your email here, this will also work. I have a home and down here I have even an imprint, which is automatically filled by Nunjax privacy policy, you'd provide this yourself. Same here with a disclaimer. But yeah, what we want to do now is make this navbar responsive. And to do that, we need to uh, apply some jQuery and also some CSS. First of all, let me show you what's the problem. So now I have just three items and this language switcher here is not so much, but imagine you add a gallery and services, some more of those, then they have enough space here in the wide view, but when I go to a mobile use case, those get very small and it gets very narrow. So typically what you want is for those now to be vertically aligned and also to have some button to open and close the navbar. This is what I've already implemented on my homepage. I can show you that. So here we also have this horizontal navbar, but when I switch to mobile, you see, I now have this hamburger button when I click on it, it opens up the navbar, can switch to another side and it's still, it's also sticky when I close it and I can scroll up. And when I make it wider, it again transforms into the horizontal navbar. So that's the goal also here on the homepage template. So as usual for this homepage, I want to go with a mobile first use case, which means that I'll now transform this navbar into a vertical one, which looks like I want it on a mobile device. And then I use media queries, same as with the sticky navbar, to make some adjustments for showing it in a horizontal fashion when there's enough space. And I can again use here the developer toolbar and just play around with the CSS styles here on the side just to find out how to yeah, get the look I want. And for this, I first need to select the navbar. So I use this picker here. That's the navigation container. And in it, you see, I already have this menu button, which is currently not displayed. So if I activate it, it will just appear above the navbar. So that's the first thing I have to do. And this uh, hamburger button is basically completely CSS. And if you look at the code of my GitHub for this page, you will get the CSS styles you need to create this button. It also has a nice animation if you click on it, which we'll see later. But yeah, for now, the topic is not how to create this button. You could use any button, you could use an image. The thing is just, it's now visible above the navigation. And then here, this, this navigation. And the thing is, for a responsive navigation, it's good to have it a flex box. So you see here, this navigation, it has display set to flex. And here's the flex direction, which is currently row, which means the items within the flex box are aligned in horizontal fashion. If I now go in here and change this to column, you suddenly see I already have the vertical use case. So this was very easy. Now, next thing, what we have to do, we also have to provide a background here for those. And let's have a look. Um, the navigation container already has a background. We just copy this over and also add it here to the navbar. So background color. And then also it should extend over the complete width. So make the width 100. 
percent and it seems there's still something missing and we already see it if we look at this here it seems i still have a media query of 800 or for the 800 pixel use case where the max width of the navigation container is set to 55 rem if i remove that suddenly it extends over the complete width which is just what i want but for some reason the main content is in front of it so i should apply a z index or z index to the navigation container to remedy this and i'll make this 50 because um, this way it will also be in front of any of the other elements for example this home page template also includes a gallery which uses a z index of 10 and 11 and yeah with 50 i can be sure to have it in front of this also with those two changes now in place we now have a vertical navbar and yeah currently the image here for the language this doesn't look too nice so i could now make this centered have it here but what i want i want to take it out of the flex box and move it up here to the right side and this can be done very easily so i just select this this item can have a position which is absolute and if i make it absolute it takes it out of this flexbox layout and I can now set the absolute positions. For example, top, I set it to zero and then I can also set right and I set it to 0 0.5 and now it's up here on this side. So it's still here within the flexbox but by assigning an absolute position, it's basically taken out of this layout logic. So we now have exactly what we want for the mobile use case. So if I now switch to the mobile case and make this smaller, this looks quite nice. One thing that's still missing is the shadow I had at the bottom of the header is now gone. So let's have a look. It's currently assigned here to the navigation container, which still has just this height and I'll keep it that way. But to get the shadow down here to the bottom of the navbar, I just take it out here so let's just deactivate it here and I assign this style to the navigation so box shadow and put it here so now this looks nice I have a nice separation and later when I make this animation here when I click on the button this goes up and down this will look nice in the mobile use case and we'll use jQuery for that but before we do so we now have to take all the styles we just made and yeah, put them in the actual CSS and then also make the switch when I move from a mobile use case to the normal use case. So at a certain width, I want to go back to the styles which I had before where I have this navigation in a horizontal fashion. So let's just do that. And I just moved Visual Studio Code here to the side and we're in the navigation CSS. So all my styles within this template are here in this styles folder under source, the variant base is the basic variant, and then under styles and navigation styles are located here. So what I just need to do now is do the changes we made. So move, first of all, those box shadows as we did just now down into the navigation. Then let's remember what else did we do. So if we look here, we also made the width of the navigation 100%. So let's do that, width 100%. Then let's check the rest. I think for the navigation, this is it. Oh no, we have the background color. So that's another thing. Let's just copy those over. And by the way, I'm always assigning the RGB and the RGBA just to be backwards compatible in case some browser cannot deal with the alpha value here. So most of the modern browsers will just work, but yeah, that's just a way to provide some backwards compatibility. Then what we did was we activated this hamburger button. Let's go down to the style for it. So here's the menu button. It's currently set to display none. So I remove that. And here you also see the CSS. So it's not so much all those different elements of the button are created with this code here. Then there's also already some navigation or not navigation, some animation setting. So if I change anything 
on this button, it will be a 0.5 second ease in out animation. So that's all set up. And if you want to have this button, I also took it from some tutorial. I'm not sure if I remember the URL for that tutorial, but anyways, you can just copy paste it. It's quite neat or you can, if you want, just use a SVG or some image for it, but then you don't get the animation, which I'll show you later. So for now, I think we're through here. Let's have a look at the container again. Oh yeah, the Z index. This might be something we want to do. And we set it to 50. So let's give this a try and see if we for forgot something. As usual, I run gulp to have everything compiled. Then I can just refresh. And yeah, for sure we forget to set the direction here. The flex direction is set here and we will set it to column. Now let's run it again and I also see another thing which I missed. The image style also needs to change. So the navigation language item is what we want to change. So we go in here, position, set it to absolute. We want it to top at null or zero and right was 0.5. Now if we run gulp again, it looks good. And if I make it wider, you'll see that we already experience here that the navigation doesn't get wider than this. And that's why I already have or still have this media query here for the 800 pixels and above use case, where I set the max width of the navigation to 54. So we'll keep this because now here we are in the mobile use case. Everything smaller than that. I want this vertical bar. And how this media queries work, if you look at this, so we have a mobile first homepage. So basically all styles are applied and then at certain widths, or you have the viewport of the homepage gets a certain width, additional styles are applied. For example, at 360, 420, 480, I start changing the font size. So the font has always a good size for reading. And then here at 800 pixels, for example, this is where I say, okay, now the navigation gets a max width and will not get wider because I want it always centered above the content. And I've set up this GAL file where the CSS is created in a way that the media queries, so the media CSS will always be added at the end of the compiled CSS. And by doing this, everything what I do here in this media CSS will take precedence over the other styles. So for example, what we have for the navigation now, we set a lot of stuff here, box shadow, background color, all this stuff. I can now go to the media queries and override those. And whatever I do to the styles here will take precedence. So let's just do that now. Let's first deal with when I make this wider, I want to have this vertical bar switch back to a horizontal bar. Let's take this style and I want this change to happen not down here when it's get wider at 800. I want to apply it already at 600 pixels. So we go to flex direction and set it to row again. Then what I also want to do, I want to make this hamburger button disappear. Let's find the button style. So this one here and I'll just set display to none. Next thing we did, we set the style for this image to absolute, which we'll also remove here. So let's go here, take this code and make this relative again. Now I think it's time to have a quick look. Let's refresh the page. So make it smaller. Now you see the switch. And now we go here. As you see, we transition the 600 pixels, switch it to the horizontal case. And if I make it even wider, at this point no longer looks very good because now we want the shadow back on the header and we also want to remove the background color which we set for the navigation itself. Otherwise we get this strange separation. So let's do that next. Get the style for the header or not for the header. Let's start with this color here which we set and also with the box shadow. Just copy this over, put it right here. And what I'm going to do, I set this to none. So we don't want a shadow. 
and I make the background color transparent. Now let's build this again. That looks nice. Now we also have to put the box shadow back on the header again. So let's have a look. The header style is just header. So let's go down here and add this one dot header and put the box shadow which we just removed from the navigation to the header. Build it again. And now we're back where we started. But with the addition that when I make this smaller, we switch to the mobile use case with a vertical navbar. So this is now responsive. What we now want to do, we're done with the CSS for now. We need to make this, this button work. So we use jQuery to enable the opening and closing of the navbar. And we'll just do that by setting a max height, which we change. So for example, in the close state, we'll have the max height set to just go here to accommodate this button. And then when we click on it, the max height will extend to also reveal the other items. Before we start with the JavaScript now, I want to show you a quick change I, I did. So all we did now works, but it makes things a little harder for the animation and the setting of the height we now wanted to do. So it's why I moved all those background color and shadow stuff up into the navigation container itself. And I gave it a top position. So I can now just extend its height and I don't need to have those styles down here on the navigation. And I also set the overflow to hidden. What this does, the media queries are much simpler now. So I don't have to assign back the box shadow to the header. And yeah, it's much simpler. I can show you. So it still works as before, but if we look here at the container, you now see the container has the complete height. And when I make it wider, it's also the complete height, which means that now what we need to animate is just the max height of the container. So if I set the container max height here to 2.5 REM, then the vertical navigation part is gone. And if I just remove this again, it opens. So what we want to achieve now basically with JavaScript is just this here. When I click on this button, I want to either set or remove the max height. And this will be then also animated. So this is much simpler. I could have done it with the styles I just showed you, but I think it's a bit cleaner. And I just realized this while I was doing this tutorial that it might be easier if I just have it here and then position the navigation container with top rather than sticking it to the bottom as it was before. So this is something, it's always a process if you're doing CSS. You just play around as I do here in the browser and this way you can find better solutions to certain problems when you just test them out. So it's often a process. It's seldom that I just know how to do something. You just have a goal which you want to reach, for example, this responsive navbar and yeah then you apply the styles and when you apply those you can review the code and see if you can make it a little simpler which is what I now did and now it's finally time to write the JavaScript code. So in preparation for writing our script what I've done I've created a hamburger navbar folder here down the base scripts. I added a hamburger navbar JS in which I just put a function which will console log. Then I adjusted the GARP file. So here where I built the base script, I added the hamburger navbar JS at the end. So it's all concatenated and will end up in our base script, which we include in our footer. Then the next thing, I created the Nunjax code for the hamburger navbar script, which I also did for the sticky navbar, if you remember. And finally, I added it at the end of the footer. So here you see in the footer, I include the scripts, the base.js, and then I place all the different little scripts which we created or which I created for this homepage template. For example, the cookie consent bar, the sticky nav bar in JK, and the hamburger nav bar. And I did the same for the English version. Let's have a quick look at the homepage. When I now start it, it's all integrated correctly. You see down here in the console, it says hamburger. So our hamburger function or hamburger navbar function is executed. Now we just have to fill it with some proper code. So this console log was just to see if the setup is correct, if the code is executed. 
and now we can fill it out with some jQuery to give us the logic so making this button do something so let's remove the console log and yeah at the top I want to do some initialization so what I want to know here if it's open or closed so I'll have a variable for that I want to have access to the menu button which is currently undefined and I want to have access to the navigation container which also currently is still undefined because I want to change its height now as a next step I'll initialize those but I have to wait until the complete DOM so the complete home page is loaded so we know this already from the sticky navbar video that in order to do that I can subscribe to the document ready using jQuery and once the document is ready I'll now initialize those values so the menu button I'll access the CSS or not the CSS I use a CSS selector to get access to this button and the selector was just this here so now I have this button initialized let's do the same for the navigation container okay so that's the start now we need to apply some event handlers so when I click on the menu button I want to call some update function and we have to define this update function so var update equals function and here we can now do something first we check if it's open then we set is open to false and if it's not open we set is open to true now this doesn't do anything yet we also have to apply some styles now so to change the look of the navbar so to do that let's first have a look at the navigation css so if we look down here at the menu button you see I already have some open stars here which is exactly what we need but we also have to apply something like this to the navigation container so first of all let's put a max height of 2.5 rem as a default and then also supply an open state where we set the max height to a value which will just be large enough to accommodate all our elements so just like that and now let's add the code so if it's not open yet I want to add the class we just defined to the navigation container and to the menu button and if it's open I just want to remove those classes so that's all we need to do let's try it now refresh this so here we're in the normal use case and now we're in the mobile use case well, when we click on this hamburger button this will open and you also see the animation for the button if I click again it will close now the only thing I want to do I want this to animate so now you see the buttons already animating but the navbar is not let's remedy this and we do this in the CSS let's just quickly go and just grab this animation definition and just put it here on the container build it again have another look and now it animates so this looks quite nice now let's also see if it's still sticky so <laughs> we have some nice animation going on here and yeah the reason for this is I defined the transition for everything so let's change that so up here where it says all max height is what we want to animate let's build this again refresh this have another look now this is gone and if I open it it still animates if I go up so it all works yeah and with this we also reached the end of the tutorial I think we went through a lot here again as with the sticky navbar I showed you how to use the developer tools to directly test out the CSS styles you have to apply or you want to apply to get the desired look and once you've figured out what styles you need to do you just put them into the real CSS of your homepage. I showed you how to use media queries to make it look adjustable. So for a mobile case and for the normal desktop case have different navbars. And then we also applied some jQuery to yeah, create this open and closed styles by just adding and removing classes. So I hope you liked this tutorial. If so, make sure to subscribe for more. I think I have a few more ideas what to do with this template and also with the homepage. Also, I might make a little tutorial about how to use this template actually, how to 
create a slideshow. So everything's already included, the JavaScript code for the slideshow, which I have, for example, here on my homepage, this slideshow with a little zoom effect, also those galleries. This code, it's already there. We just need to, yeah, create a page which uses it. And I think I'll have a tutorial on that. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.